All right, folks, welcome back to the um, image analysis Python tutorials um, for classifying land cover. I know in the last one I said we were going to start opening a raster or Landsat and Nape imagery uh, using GDAL in this video, but I actually think we want to go take a look at that in QGIS first to see what our data look like, and then we should probably actually um, put together our... Um, training and test data sets in QGIS as well. So we'll get into reading those data with Python coming up, but first we're going to get all the inputs necessary and just take a look and make sure our data uh, are what they should be. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to go ahead and pause this while QGIS finishes loading, and once it's loaded up, we'll take a look at the data. All right, I've got QGIS opened up. Let's go find those files we downloaded. Um, our Landsat and Nate files, so mine are in on my C drive. They are in the temp folder. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that Nate first. We've got Nate. And I want to grab this TIFF file, and I'm going to add that in. It'll take just a sec to open. So now let's take a look here. So this is in... UTM zone 12 north and it's going to convert this to WGS 84 um, just for viewing purposes. One thing we want to take a look at here um, is we want to make sure the coordinate systems for all of these images match when we do this. So depending on what our Landsat is we might have to convert that. Um, and it might be easier to convert the Nate because we have a number of different Landsat layers. So let's go take a look at our Landsat here. And mine, I put it in this top folder. Those are other Landsat images I have down there. Okay, and so we've got a number of different bands. And let's just go look up and see what those bands are just so we can be on the same page with all of that. So I'm just going to search for uh, Landsat 8 bands. And this should bring... Uh, what we want. So we want the Landsat 8 band designations from USGS. And hopefully this will show us. There we go. So this is showing us an image. So one is the coastal aerosol, two blue, three green, four red, five NIR, and then we have our short wave infrared, panchromatic cirrus. So the ones we're really interested in here are going to be two through seven. So notice we have the resolution over here. And when we get to this panchromatic, it's a different resolution. The series is going to be clouds and the thermal infrared are a different resolution here. So we're going to be primarily interested in bands two through seven. Okay, and so I'm going to add bands two through seven in here. And so two through seven Let's add those guys in. And this might take just a sec to load. Oh, so there they are. And we do not know what the coordinate reference system is for these bands. So we need to go figure that out, actually, because if I, I'm going to zoom to this layer, and it's not going to match up with where my nape is. So we're going to have to go in and we're going to need to uh, figure out what that is. So you can see these are not lining up in the same spot. So let's see if we can assign a coordinate system to the, uh, to the Landsat images. So I'm going to go back to the internet here. And let's check out Landsat Analysis Ready Data and check out the projection for those and see if we can find out anything about the projection. Okay, so it looks like we might have something here. So I'm going to open that up. Okay, and I'm going to look through this, and I'll get back to you when I find out what we have. Okay, so if you look here, um, 
they have the Albers Equal Area Conic Map Projection with the WGS84 datum. Okay, so let's go to QGIS and let's see if we can uh, work with this. So I double clicked on this to get it up. And you can right click on it if you need to and go to properties to get there. And we want to go to source here and let's select this projection. This is invalid. Let's go here and let's search for Albers equal area conic. And so we have a number here. And we have a few different versions. And so if we click on this, see if we can get some information. That's the North American datum of 83. We need WGS 84. Let's see if we can find one of these. Once again, this has the NAT 83. This also has the NAT 83. So let's go in and let's see if we can find, um, oh, this says that's 2WGS84. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can find out um, a few more specifications about this on the Landsat website. Oh, yeah, right here. Let's see if we can find this out. All right, so we're going to have to make our own projection here, and I'll show you how we can do that. So let's go over to the folder that has our Landsat data. You'll see this XML file at the top. I'm going to open that with a text editor. And when I open that, you can see that we have projection information right here. We have the datum, the projection, the units, corner points, origins, okay, things like that. This is everything that we need. And you see we have the projection information here. So we're going to go into QGIS and we're going to create our own custom projection for the Landsat data. So let's go back to QGIS. In the bottom here, I'm going to search for custom projections and I'm going to open that up. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to copy this down here just in case it goes away, but I'm going to copy this proj4 string. So we're going to copy that and we're going to click this add button. And I'm going to call this um, Albers equal area WGS 84. Okay, and I'm going to paste that proj4 string that I just copied down there. Okay, so now my projection, we can go back to our uh, data here. So my projection is AEA, my datum is WGS84. Need to make sure my units are in meters. So let's go check that. Units equals M right here. Okay, good. Now let's go back here and check things out. So we've got our standard parallels and our origin latitude and our false easting. Let's go check out our parameters here. So we've got two latitudes here and the longitude here. Let's go check those out real quick. Okay. Okay, and so if we take a look at this here, let's go back. We have three latitudes. Sorry, we have we have two latitudes here, 29.5, 45.5. So we've got 29.5, 45.5. We've got our other latitude here, which is 23.0. And that is 23.0. So that's lat zero, that's our origin latitude. Right there. And then we have our central meridian, which is a longitude, which is negative 96 which is there, and then we don't have a false easting or false northing. So this is already set up like it should be. So let's see if we can get this to work. I'm going to click OK. 
I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to find my projection that I just saved. Um, let's do Albers. Equal area WGS 84. Here's my user defined, and let's click OK. OK, and so we have a problem here. It says inverse of unknown axis. OK, OK. And let's say OK here and just see if that did, that did. OK, so that moved that one up there. So look at this. Okay, so now if I turn these other ones off, you'll notice, and let's hope this worked, that my nape image should now overlap my Landsat. Okay, and I'm going to drag this down below so we can see that it indeed lines up. So there you go. We've got those lined up now. They're in the right spot. So let's go ahead, we'll go through and do that with the rest of these and make sure um, that we can assign the projections here and they all work. So let's go ahead, double click this and we'll set this to our uh, oh, Albers equal area WGS 84, which is this one I defined right here. Click OK and click OK and that lined up. I think that's this one here. Yep. And let's do it with this one here. So find that one again. That one. Okay. Okay. And now we'll do this one. Search this. WGS. Okay. Okay. Now this one. Find the projection, WGS, click on that, OK, OK, double click on this one, and we'll change this again to WGS, OK, OK. All right, so let's turn these guys all off, make sure we're lining up, and we are lining up. Okay, good deal. So we're going to stop this video here. Um, I'm sorry that was a little unexpected glitch we had. We had to fix those projections. But now that we've got them fixed, we can go through and we can visualize these data and we can start making our training and, and testing data sets.